So one of my first guitars that I bought many, many years ago was a Photo Flame Made in Japan Fender Strat. And I've had a couple of them over the years. I had a Tele I sold. I love the feeling of the neck. I love the quality and the craftsmanship of the Japanese made guitar. Those Made in Japan guitars, there's really nothing like them. I have a bunch of saved favorites in eBay and every once in a while a couple projects will come up I'll take a look at and this was one of them. So I wanted to show you a next project coming up here. I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do with this yet, but I figured I would do some story time and talk to you guys through this. So I found a Made in Japan Photo Flame Strat that looks like it had water damage because the whole guitar was peeling apart. And that looked like a really simple project to clean up. And as you guys know, my simple projects are never simple. But I thought this one would be quick and easy to turn it back around. So the original price was $1.99. I put, I put an offer in at $99. And he took it at $149 back. And I said, ah, oh, what the heck, let's take it. So this definitely looks like it was flooded or something. It smells a bit musty. So what I'm thinking is that the guitar got wet it expanded and then it contracted and then it peeled. So this was the photo flame film that they put over the guitar body. And it looks like it's maple. I don't know, I can't tell. What they did is they took a photo of a piece of figured maple and then they overlaid it and they colored it and sprayed it so it looked like a piece of flame maple, but it was faux maple. So this looks like it's dry. Really curious as to what's underneath here. I don't really want to re-sand because I hate sanding. So let's see what's in here. And this is actually really promising right here. I can't tell if this is a watermark or if that's actually the figure. And I'm curious to see how much of this I will be able to peel off without damaging the body. So I can see it's already a one, two, maybe three or four piece guitar body. And it looks like a maple top. Something like that. I'm pretty sure with a little bit of heat, this will all peel off. Because that's kind of what looks like is happening. This is my Stu Mac Les Paul adjustment tool and it's got a pad so I can peel this stuff off without causing too much problems. So let's see if I stick this under, what does it do? So it's still stuck on here. I've actually got my heat gun up here. Let's see what the heat gun does. I can smell as the heat gun's going. There's a ton of moisture in this body. You can smell it.
Got the scraper from the PRS. Oh, look at that. Comes off ever so nicely. So this should be a pretty easy peel off project. So the heat gun pulls this off really nice. And that's pretty thick. Pretty thick finish. So what I'll do is I'll take this hardware off, strip this off, line the neck, put it back on, and should be good to go. I'll probably oil up all the hardware, oil up the pickups. Actually, I haven't even tested to see if they work, so let's do that. It looks like it all works. So that's one of the great things about flood guitars is that you can just fix them up and if they're dry, should be fine. Neck pocket doesn't really show any issues. So this should be a fun project. We'll go ahead and start taking this apart, throw it in a bucket, clean off some of this residue and garbage and maybe we'll paint this a solid color. I don't know. We'll have to figure that out. This is like a lime green. I'll figure it out. But let's get all this hardware off. So taking all of the hardware and bridge off took about, I don't know, five minutes here. Pop off the back. Cut the wires. Pull off the control plate there, trim plate. For some reason I had trouble getting those screws out. I gotta replace those. Bridge pops off. And then we'll get the heat gun, clamp it down, and we'll heat up the finish. And the front pops off really nice actually doing it this way. Really didn't have any issues with the front. Didn't really have any dig outs with the scraper but I could really smell that the wood was still a little bit moist. Still has some humidity. So when I sand it down later, I'm actually gonna sit on this for a month or two, maybe three months, make sure that the body is all dried out. So we'll just heat up the finish, pop it off. Like I said, the front and the sides came off really nicely. was really surprised how easy this was. And when we get to the back, it was a little bit harder. So I got a little one asking me some questions. And then the back here it was much harder. For some reason, the finish didn't expand, so it was pretty much stuck on the body. And you can see as I'm heating this up, and pushing with the scraper, it's coming off in sort of chips. It's not peeling off nicely at all. So what I was trying to do is heat up a spot, let it cool off. And in some instances that worked a little bit better. But it was not doing it at all like the front or the sides. So I'm thinking maybe the guitar fell face forward, something like that. But you can see as I'm peeling, it's not coming off in the big chunks. It's chipping. 
And when I'm using the scraper here, I'm actually digging it in a little bit to the wood. And this is a soft body. I think this is actually basswood. So getting the nooks and the crannies is a little bit hard. This stuff is pretty hard. So when I started sanding it off, when it's heated up, it came off really nicely. But when it was cool, it was hard to come off. So I was holding the heat gun in one spot and trying to get that finish to pop off. And then the back and the sides really went pretty smoothly. But you can see this is after removing all of the finish. A couple of spots there you can see I actually burnt some of the wood from holding the heat gun there too long. Got a bunch of scratches from the scraper. But overall looking pretty good. You can see that one little nib right there. So we'll take this outside to my sanding station. We'll throw the GoPro on. And I've already got 320 grit here. And I thought I could use 320 and clean it up and get to it right away. But for some reason there was, I don't know, that, that film that was stuck on was really not working all that great with the 320. So at some point here, before I cut over, I moved back to 180. And that actually worked out really well. So we'll sand off the arm. As I was sanding, you could smell the basswood. It's got kind of a tulip-ish smell. So basswood, tulip wood is sort of in the same family a little bit. Poplar, some of that softer American hardwood. So we'll just sand this out. And I've got 180 grit here. And we'll just sand out the top and the back and the sides. And I, like I said before, I'm going to let this just sit. So we'll give this a couple months, let it dry a little bit more. And then maybe I'll come back once more 320 and prep it for paint. And this didn't take all that long. The back was a little bit of a pain to get clean. But overall, I was pretty happy with the way this turned out. Even sanding the horns can be a little bit tedious sometimes. But 180 was the perfect grit for this. And I can get in all those nooks and crannies. So I've got a bunch of different types of sanding pads to do this. And I've learned over time they all sort of have their own purpose. And once I do the back and the sides and all the curves, I'll go in and get the horns. And what I've learned is to take that paper then that's a little bit softer and go in and work the horns. It's already broken in. The paper is not loading at all, so it's actually pretty easy to do. So here are some of the pictures of the body done. It's looking pretty good. Definitely needs some sort of paint or color. Haven't figured that out. But like I said, I want to let it sit for a little bit, dry out a little bit more, and then I'll hit it once more at 320. But we'll be a couple of months for an update here. But just wanted to show you something I found for cheap on eBay. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video.